A contested election descends into civil unrest, driving a country into chaos and a president into exile. 2019 saw Bolivians rise up in anger at a government they say was led by an autocrat who no longer had the support of the people. I'm Imran Garda and this year's Newsmaker is the protest movement that forced Bolivian President Evo Morales out of office. All this week, we're looking back on one of the major themes to make the headlines this year, anti-government demonstrations. Some were bloodless, many were not, as was the case in Bolivia. The country's president warned leaders not to stain themselves with blood as protesters took to the streets, even though it was him they were angry about. Latin America's longest-serving leader wasn't supposed to be allowed to run a fourth time until he ignored the results of a referendum on limiting presidential terms. With many people questioning if he won the October election fair and square, things soon turned ugly. Adam Pletz reports on what sparked the protest and why each side blamed the other for the violence. Violent demonstrations on the streets of La Paz. At least three people have been killed and dozens more wounded. Protesters accused President Evo Morales of stealing his election victory through fraud. After an unexplained 24-hour pause in the ballot count, there was a decisive shift in Morales' favor. Regional politician Luis Fernando Camacho, who is the president of Santa Cruz's civic committee, has become a symbol of the opposition. We are very sorry. What we want is for peace to return to our country, for hatred, confrontation and racism among Bolivians to be set aside, but above all, for us to have a country with peace and hope. But the socialist leader, who is in his fourth term, seems intent on putting up a fight. Morales has backed an order to the vote by the Organization of American States, which is expected in mid-November. Opposition leaders have questioned the validity of the election audit. If it confirms Morales' victory, demonstrators have indicated they will continue regardless. In respect to the Constitution, there has been fraud. We have called for new elections. We want Evo Morales to go for good. Morales is Bolivia's first indigenous president and has loyal support in many rural communities. We are calling for justice, prison for Camacho. Someone needs to pay for their crimes. As the nation awaits the results of the election audit, will Morales hold on to power or is his time in office limited? Adam Pletz, The Newsmakers. Putting aside the fact that many Bolivians didn't think Morales' name should ever have appeared on the ballot, it was the way he ruled that had protesters in the streets calling for him to step down. At one point, if you asked Siri who the president of the country was, it would have responded with, the dictator of Bolivia is Evo Morales. Was that accurate? Well, we asked our panel of guests, which included Diego Ayo, a professor of political science at the Higher University of San Andres. I can accept that. We needed to separate some categories. We needed to understand that at this moment, we have three kinds of governments, three scenarios in which we could uh, land. The first scenario is the democratic scenario, is the, 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 the scenario we are needing, we are trying to, to get as the final result. The second scenario is this kind of competitive authoritarianism, is this kind of regime that is a, a little bit less than a dictatorship. And the third one option, the third option is the dictatorship. Now, we need to kill more people to be a dictatorship. And hopefully that, that doesn't happen. I would say, right. I hope it, I hope right. it, of course I hope it. Are you open to the idea, Diego, that maybe the election was bungled, was mismanaged, when they went quiet for a day or so, maybe they just screwed up, but they didn't rig it? No, 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 they, they make a big fraud. We could not count just this election, we needed to understand that it is a kind of process 
that uh, was started at 2016 with a referendum in which Evo Morales lost. He lost. Uh, four years ago, he lost this referendum and he couldn't be reelected. That's something we need to say. Mm -hmm. And the next years, 2000, uh, uh, 2017, no, and 2018, they. They they talk with the constitutional tribunal and they talk with the electoral tribunal, not just trying uh, to make them uh, weak, just ordering them uh, to right. stop making uh, things uh, uh, for the benefit of all Bolivians. You no, know? right. and uh, this is this is this election is the final result of all this combination yeah. of things. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's been building up for a long time. That seems to be clear. Uh, Raul, one of the more disturbing incidents that we've all witnessed over the past few days, you have a small town mayor really roughed up by a crowd, public humiliation really, uh, Patricia Arke, the mayor of Vinto, now a member of the president's party, as far as I'm aware also of indigenous extract. It was more than just this idea of you know, protesting against somebody's policies or support of Morales, there was an element of a ritual public humiliation. Would, uh, would it be fair to say that there was an element of racism connected to that and that there might be an element of racism within the opposition movement? Yes, I think so. <clears throat> uh, I think that it, there is in this country much of racism. It is sad to say that, uh, but we have those... Uh, Instincts. It is. It is sad. You're seeing now the the scene there. Mm -hmm. The the mayor was really humiliated, maybe beaten. We don't know. Painted, and this is a horrible scene. Uh, th there is an explanation. There is no justification with this, but there is an explanation. And the mob thought that this uh, woman gave information uh, about the protesters, and one protester what was killed got, got killed. So the mob was really angry about this, thinking that she was the person that uh, made this uh, protester uh, finally killed. But anyway, there is no justification for this violence. Right. Martin Sivak, would that be um, an, so something to keep in mind when we hear Morales and those close to him, the vice president and others, come out and say, the other side wants to stir racial animosity here. So there, there seems to be a feeling that we've, we, this has been hard fought from our end. When we came to power, we made all these changes. We gave dignity to indigenous people. And those people who are protesting this election want to want to roll all of this back. Yeah, let me step back. From, and the government is saying that, that there is a coup d'etat. I don't believe that there's a coup d'etat. There's a lot of anger mm. against the government. And I would say that part of that anger is racially motivated because, as Raul said, there's a lot of racism. And for many, many Bolivians, still is unbearable to deal where, with Evo Morales in president because he's indigenous, because he comes from a you know, very poor uh, social background, etc., etc., etc. And the new lady, like, paying a lot of attention to Camacho, because Camacho is emerging and the, as the new Bolsonaro in Bolivia with some statements that can be really a, a contribution for more violence. Diego Ayo, is Camacho emerging as a new Bolsonaro in, in, in uh, Bolivia? <laughs> it could be a new Bolsonaro. He is really a, a, a religious guy, you know? But we have we have to say we have to say emphatically that it's not a totally racial motivated problem. That's something we need to stress on. Uh, the president Morales is saying every single day that there is a racist problem, and they want to create this racist problem. They want to separate us with these uh, excuses, with these arguments. But we need to understand, for example, that in uh, I don't know, San Julian in Santa Cruz, there's another department. Uh, we could work with the indigenous people, with the peasants, uh, very, very, with, 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 all the, with all the things under the, the, the table. We could work with them. 
he's trying, President Boral, he's trying to separate us. He stay every single second, every single day. They are trying to humiliate us. They are trying to attack us. They are trying to... No, that's not something completely real. It's, of course, real. We are offending them. No, the, the fight has ended at this point, at a racist right. point. But it's not something that we need to, to, to keep moving. No? All right. So, Raul, has the former president, Carlos Mesa, the man who says he won the election, and the protest leader, Luis Fernando Camacho, have they not maybe condemned the racially motivated attacks and protests enough? Have they not been clear enough to say, listen, this is not about us wanting to overturn the first indigenous leader of the country? I'm not sure. I think that both are trying to really condemn these uh, signs of, of, of uh, violence and racism. I think that they are. I don't think that uh, uh, Mesa nor Camacho are uh, racists at, at all. Uh, Camacho is uh, more Catholic, like uh, more maybe like a right-wing uh, kind of a, a leader. But I don't think, I don't see them as racist at all. Uh, and I think that they are trying, of course, they are pushing the government. They are trying to make big pro manifestations and, and protests. But I don't think, I don't see them as racist motivated. Diego Ayo. It would be stupid for the president to resign before the OAS comes out with its full audit, right? He needs to stay put for now. No, of course, we need some kind of help. We need international help. At this case, we need the 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 the, the word of, of of the OAS. No, of course, we need this kind of support. Yes, yes. Well, the country did get the support of the Organization of American States, whose audit of the disputed election results found serious irregularities. Soon after, Morales went into self-imposed exile in Mexico, declaring himself the victim of a coup. Then, quoting a Peruvian revolutionary, Morales promised, we will return and we will be millions. Anti-government protesters took to the streets in celebration with the same kind of fervor they demonstrated in opposition. To them, Morales' promised return wasn't likely to happen anytime soon. Adam Pletz reports on how Latin America's longest-serving leader let go of the reins of power. On Sunday, Evo Morales resigned as president of Bolivia, a decision apparently triggered by the police, army and other institutions ending their support for him. To my brothers and sisters of Bolivia, the whole world, I want to inform you from LOCA. I'm here with the Vice President and Minister of Health that after listening to my friends at the Social Movement Federation, the Bolivian Workers' Center and the Catholic Church, I have decided to resign my position as President. Morales has called his removal a coup and accepted political asylum in Mexico. Some protesters are celebrating his resignation but his departure has also led to fighting in the streets of La Paz. It is very important that the police and the armed forces do not give an impression that there are actions of revenge and intimidation taking place, that there are no threats of imprisonment against the movement to socialism senators. Left-wing leaders across Latin America have expressed their support for Morales, El ejército de Bolivia pidió la renuncia del presidente. The Bolivian army requested the resignation of the president, and President Evo Morales decided to submit his resignation to avoid a civil war. Therefore, it's a coup, because the army requested the resignation of the president. But right-wing politicians say his departure is a victory for the Bolivian people. I am hoping for a peaceful and quick transition that will lead to a presidential election. Indeed, it was the great demand of Bolivians in the streets. They were together, united, demanding a transition that the government leave due to the fraud. The Washington-based Organization of American States says it found evidence of manipulation in Morales' recent electoral victory. It's an accusation his government denied. According to the Bolivian constitution, new presidential elections should take place within 90 days. 
Opposition lawmaker and Senate Vice President Janine Añez has become interim president. Morales says he will return with more strength and energy. But was his removal the result of popular democracy expressed on the streets? Or was he forced out by a coup? Adam Pletz, The Newsmakers. So was it people power or a coup that forced Morales out of office? He claimed the latter, but some say that does a disservice to the people whose sacrifices on the streets drove him out. At the time, Morales also claimed that his only sin was being indigenous, a trade unionist, and a coca grower, hinting at the pervasive issue of racism that exists both within society and institutions. It was an undercurrent throughout the protests and the catalyst for a lot of the violence that took place. I asked Marika Rithoff if she expected that violence to continue. We, we have already seen um, uh, problems of uh, police violence, violence between different uh, groups, both supporting uh, and opposing Morales. Um, my uh, reading of the situation is that uh, Bolivia is, um, has become very uh, polarized which is also uh, reflected in, in both the election results and uh, in the, the opposition uh, and support for Morales. Um, what is very worrying is that uh, indigenous rights have become a symbol uh, of, um, uh, of the opposition to Morales in the sense that uh, they have become an object of, uh, of hatred, um, of racism. Um, and in that perspective, uh, I worry about uh, the position of indigenous people, whether mm -hmm. the expansion mm -hmm. of indigenous rights will continue or whether Bolivia will take a, okay. take a step back. So I now. wonder, that's an interesting point. So Raul, I wonder when we look at the different players here. So we have the deputy leader of the Senate, Janine Añez Chavez, who's currently in charge for, for the interim. We have the protest leader, Luis Fernando Camacho the former president, Carlos Mesa, who ran against Morales and said he won the election. With all of them in mind, can indigenous Bolivians trust them to ensure that they can still have their rights as equal citizens? I don't think that those uh, leaders really represent the, the thinking and the uh, thoughts of these, uh, these indigenous groups. I think that, but we're gonna have elections in three months. We're going to have elections in three months or maybe four months. And uh, the mass party, the party of the former President Morales, is going to have a, a candidate. It's not going to be him, of course, because he's out of the country. But the mass is going to have a candidate. And uh, so the, the, the indigenous population, peasants uh, and poor people that supported uh, Morales can, of course, uh, vote for another candidate. Bolivia, you want to fight the system, fight them at the polls in three months? Do you accept that? Um, well, I think what we've actually seen is uh, of, uh, threats against the mass. Officials have had their houses burnt down. There's been a campaign of intimidation and reprisals against uh, mass leaders and their supporters. So that's why I'm I'm quite worried about what the, the future might hold, because the, the opposition really is seeking nothing less than the annihilation of the mass in, in Bolivian political life. Um, so as for whether the, who will be protecting the rights of, of indigenous peoples, of, of campesinos, it's, it remains yet to be seen. Hmm. And so I just want to, I want us to have a little look at a uh, Morales tweet recently. We've translated it from the Spanish. He said, sisters and brothers, I, I leave for Mexico, grateful for the generosity of the government, of the fraternal people who gave us asylum to take care of ourselves. It hurts me to leave the country for political reasons, but I will always be ready. Soon I will return with more strength and energy. Marika, you said this has polarized Bolivia. Arguably, it has polarized Latin America and even the world as the news has broken over the past couple of days and we're seeing the political, the geopolitical battle lines drawn. So the Mexicans are saying, okay, we'll take care of you. The Argentines come in and condemn it. We've had Russia say it's a coup and we have the United States and, and Brazil and Colombia and others who say it's not a coup and this is good news, right? How is this going to reshuffle geopolitical alliances or re-emphasize geopolitical alliances when it comes to Latin America? 
Marika? Yes, so it's uh, it's very interesting to see uh, which Latin American leaders immediately stepped up to condemn the coup, um, and others, of course, celebrated it as a, um, a victory for democracy, such as Bolsonaro in Brazil. So um, I see uh, a new alliance uh, emerging there between countries that um, uh, that support a more a turn towards uh, return towards leftist uh, government. Uh, in Latin America, but also a hardening of the position of countries such as Brazil. Um, and uh, that can also be a, a worrying situation in the terms of Brazil's close economic relations to, to Bolivia. So Brazil's dependency on Bolivian gas is very important. Uh, so Brazil has clearly has a stake in what, uh, what is going to happen uh, in Bolivia. Uh, and I expect Bolsonaro's position to be problematic because he clearly supports uh, what has happened um, and also new elections. Mm -hmm. But that could lead to a situation where um, Bolivia has a government which is less supportive of indigenous rights. Right. Uh, Raul, how do you feel about that? The fact that people superimpose pre-existing ideological models on, on what's happening here. So you have those who say, well, thank God this is the death of Bolivarianism and the left and so on. And there are others who are saying, you see, this is just another, yet another example of the right wing resurging and knocking out any decent leader who wants to take care of the poor in, in, in our region. How do you feel about that as a Bolivian? It is very interesting that uh, in general, the left in Europe and the left in the US and Canada, they think that this is a coup. And they think that um, uh, this was a very unfair way of treating uh, Morales. Of course, uh, that uh, that uh, sentiment uh, is also in Latin America, for example, in Argentina and Mexico. But in general, the region, our region, our neighbors, uh, are not really saying that this was a coup. Last night, when Morales had to go to to Mexico in in, in his plane. Uh, Peru and Ecuador uh, didn't allow the plane to go through their uh, airspace. And those are not right-wing countries, extreme right, like Vizcarra in Peru, uh, Moreno in, uh, in Ecuador. And they allow the, the plane to go through their airspace. This is for, for one reason. It's because Morales was an authoritarian leader that wanted to stay in power forever. And, uh, but of course, the left in the US and in Europe and in, in, in England, they're saying that this, uh, this is a coup. But in the region where they are closer and they understand better what is going on, they say that this is not a coup. This was a revolt, a popular revolt against a president that wanted to stay in power forever. Morales has been offered political asylum in Mexico, but has hinted at staging his comeback from Argentina, where he currently is. We'll, of course, be following that comeback if it happens in 2020. That's all we have time for. But before we go, we'll leave you with some of the most striking images from Bolivia's anti-government backlash. Thank you.